start if we can. I think we're at 7 o'clock. This is the Rollinsford Planning Board. It's February 6, 2018. And I believe the uh, main item of the agenda, the only item on the agenda tonight, is what is the former Bluen Building. And uh, in looking at the minutes from last month, it looks to me that we continued uh, the Bluen Board's uh, plan to tonight. Um, I think, although I'm not unclear to me, the, the minutes indicate that the public hearing was suspended at 803 as opposed to concluded, so I guess my big question for the board as to whether or not the public hearing continues, or are we... We continued it so we could, um, once we heard the, the, the revised plan, the public wanted to comment. It good. Okay. And if I recall my email correctly, it seems to me that a revised uh, plan, perhaps, or, or documents was recently provided to the, uh, the town. And perhaps I might start by asking if, if Mr. Krebs had a chance to look at that and has any comments on that. So, just to give you an update, um, the, what, what happened after the last meeting was, uh, to go back, yes, the, the public hearing was continued, I think, at least that was, I, I believe, everybody's intent, although there's nobody here, I don't think, that, that, um, to comment on or any of butters. But, <clears throat> so after the last meeting, we, we met Tobin, uh, Farwell, myself, and uh, Jay uh, Stephen met over at uh, Civil Consultants to review the, the drainage issue, uh, specifically the, the water leaving the front of the site on the main street. Um, I know my, uh, Mike has been in the loop, but I don't know if everybody else has. I don't think they have. Jay did not feel comfortable uh, weighing in on the matter because he didn't know what was in the road for drainage. He didn't know anything about downtown drainage. Um, as you probably recall, the uh, the new road agent had uh, said it was fine with him, and then he recanted that statement after he realized there was a little bit more of impervious surface being proposed on the front side or the front of the lot, and he didn't want to weigh in not knowing what was going on. Um, as a result of that, uh, Jay, and I, was un, I was unaware of this, Mike probably knew about it, but Caroline, I think, brought it up that Hoyle Tanner Associates had done a drainage analysis of some of the drainage in this area. So, uh, we, we asked uh, Hoyle Tanner Associates, Aaron LaChance from Hoyle Tanner, who is, uh, uh, was on the planning board of Rollins for one time and, and, and knows this area, uh, has had either he or I think actually his staff engineer looked at the situation. So he's here tonight to talk about the issue of sending more water from the front parking lot onto Main Street. The rest of the storm water, is, it's my understanding that Jay is fine with. It's just this area that's the problem. So that's sort of where we stand. Yes, I've looked at the plans. The photometric plans have been revised. The site plans have been revised. I mean, there's really not a whole lot. Everything is basically there. So it's not a, there's not a whole lot of movement with these plans. The building's <coughs> there that, you know, the, the, the million dollar question is, uh, or not the million dollar question, the, really the central question is, what are we going to do with this area up here? Um, you know, the, the, there's really two options as I see it, and, and I think really Aaron should weigh in on this. One is to re keep the parking lot the same and, and reduce and, and eliminate. I think it's four or five parking spaces, which should further exacerbate the, the parking issue, or send water onto a town road, um, and you know, in, in, in hopes that it doesn't create a problem. So that's sort of where we stand. Okay. So it sounds as if, if the board agrees with me, that we should ask uh, our guest tonight from Hoyle and Tanner to address the board. If you would please. Sure. Okay. Mind if I come up to the table? Please. Do you want to pull that over here? Oh, sure. Down? What, I, what would be most helpful for you? Uh, that is fine there. I, I'm not going to give you okay. much specific detail. I think our recording secretary would like you to give your yes. full name oh, and, and business address for the, for the record. Uh, there's a card. But my name is Aaron Chance. 
I'm an associate with uh, Hoyle Tanner Associates. We're a consulting engineering firm, and we've done some work uh, in town here, including the recent drainage improvements down at Lower Mill, which included replacement of uh, a few lengths of pipe in the subject system that uh, this site, the Blue Mill site, drains into. So we are familiar with the system. We, we did an analysis to size the, the outlet pipes, which are a 36-inch pipe and a 30-inch pipe, so pretty big pipe, upsized from, I believe, 15-inch in the existing condition. So the town's aware that the system had some issues. We actually had uh, some sinkholes that formed, which is why that project happened. But in looking at the system to size the pipe, we realized that the piping is undersized. So when John called me and said, you know, explained the project and said, you know, does, does the system have capacity? And the short answer to the, the I guess would be no, with the caveat that um, the town recognizes that the system needs to be upgraded. And they've started that from the outfall and worked up. Um, we looked at what this site would increase for flows into the system, and it's very minimal. I want to say it's 0.5%. And um, there was a letter here that documents our review. So engineering judgment would say that that's a very small increase. And in our opinion, it, it most likely would not cause an issue. However, if you want to strictly adhere to the, to, to the site plan regulations that say no increase in the post-development, uh, which is not our opinion to say whether the board should, should not require that, um, you know, strict adherence would say that you know, something else should be done. So the letter that you have proposes uh, some solutions should the board think that that's necessary. Uh, but we also in there say that the percentage increase is very small. And given the fact that the town, over the long term, though not necessarily in the capital improvement plan, um, will be upgrading the rest of the system. We, we built some extra capacity into the, to the sections that were upgraded, knowing that as future development happens, you want to have some capacity built in. You know, not that a lot of impervious should be added to the drainage basin, but to allow for that. So there's some conservatism there. Um, and, and as you work further up in the system, further uphill towards town hall here, uh, the the impact that a an increase in the runoff would have in the system is sort of mitigated. You know, you you're dumping in more flows towards the outlet of the system the potential issue that would cause would go up. So can we say with 100% uh, confidence that this 0.5% increase isn't an issue? No, but uh, again, using engineering judgment, it's very small. Where, where it is introduced up, uphill, very far uphill from the outfall, it most likely won't be an issue. But I mean, we can't put that in writing. So it, we, well, we tried to, to, to give the board the information and have the board make the decision there are some solutions, you know, as John touched on, to uh, alleviate the, the, the post-development runoff increase. But you know, they come at a cost which may not be warranted for the scale of the project. Some of the things that we included would be tree filters, um, basically things that mechanisms that hold the water on site and, and retain it and, uh, and infiltrate. Uh, we and, and I know that this is you know this is Aaron's time to talk about the the storm, the municipal storm drain system and, and the impact of this project on that. But the the other thing that I, I the, the one thing that Jay Stephen does have some uh, expertise, uh, and I'm sure Aaron does too. Uh, and he doesn't know the site exactly, but but he, Jay Jay said with pretty good confidence that he doesn't think the material under this parking lot or in this on this lot is probably any good. And that was his biggest concern. Like what, what? How do we? You know, how do we? Do, we, we can't just dig a hole, put a catch basin in, and hope it works. It's probably you know, there, there, there may be ledge, unsuitable material, God knows what. And so that's the other concern is that you know, even if there was, you know, uh, a way to retain the water, or you know, can the water be retained? Sure, but you know, if half this material needs to be you know removed and more suitable material brought in, is it worth it? So that's sort of, you know, um, piling into what Aaron is talking about. In a new <coughs> site plan application where you're uh, building on a new parcel and, and creating a new lot, you create a detention basin or whatever the mechanism is. And if you have a little bit of an increase, well, you just make it bigger. Well, there's no you know, detention basin here. There's no facility to just make bigger. It's a constrained site. And perhaps the subsurface conditions aren't amenable to infiltration, which really would be your only solution. 
Please, Mr. Hayes. I, I would better. think that, and I truly believe that the additional flow we're creating by adding more pavement is, is, is nominal. But, and I also understand that the total run from this project down to the, the outlet um, is not completed, although the, the lower end was by the mill due to the sinkhole. But that project on the whole, and when I say project, I mean from this site down to where it exits, that whole run. Mm -hmm. What percentage of that run would you say is done? I know we did the, the very end by the mills, but are we a third through that project? No. Are we a quarter? No, a little less than that. We so significantly less. less. So realistically and time-wise, I'm just thinking that we just did 10%, the very last 10% of this project. But, but I, I, do, I, do, I do sit here and think that there hasn't been a problem all along with the parking lot. He's adding very minimum space. I mean, it seems like a lot of area, but a lot of area as it pertains to water flow, I think is, is very minimal. So, um, but I just didn't know how much of that run was done. And you're saying it's just a very tail 10%. Probably 10% by linear, lineal footage. Probably more than 10% by cost in that the lower sections are the biggest pipe and most expensive. And certainly is challenging Jacob's the mill and then the river to the outfall. So. Financially wise, not distance wise, but financially wise, because you said this 10% was an expense, the expensive 10%. Funding as a whole, how much uh, is that project? I'm just spend spend the money. spending the money. Maybe 20. I, I'm guessing, but maybe 20. So still minimal. Still not yeah, a no. great amount. Okay. It's, a, it's a big system. When you when you look at the trunk line that runs there, it's you know there's a, it's, there's a lot of footage, and then you have the you know, the branches off of that. So it's a big network. It's the intent. basically most of the village, the Santa Falls village. You, know? you evaluated the entire run when you did the the project. Your yes. project, okay. So you have a, an idea of the condition of the current in use, although we've seen failure at the tail end. We evaluated to determine the inflow, the, the quantity of water. We didn't look at all the individual pipes and say, this pipe is good, this is bad. We just know that based on sizing, that the trunk line is, is undersized. I don't think there's ever been a problem with water coming out of this. I mean, I drive down that street every day. It's not really ever been a problem that I've noticed. Oh, we have issues. We, we've met, well, <laughs> we, we had some significant issues. We had larger storms. Yeah, every time you'd see the tops of the of the, uh, the structures coming yeah, up. Yeah, that's the north side. Right. That structure was all, all that was that was just, and, and, and there were giant sinkholes. Like <coughs> the pipe was, was broken on the lower end, so all the water was draining fine from the top, but yeah. once it got down to the bottom, mm -hmm. it didn't have an outlet, so it was just going everywhere else. That's yeah. why. That was the sinkholes. That's why we had to. So this, this would only be a problem during significant rain yeah. events. Can you comment on how often is like 100 year event, 500 year? Uh, I, we, well, short answer is yes, the more significant the event, the more likelihood that, that there will be an overtopping or a surcharging issue. I can't tell you, the, the increase is so minimal with this 0.5% runoff increase that the you're not going to change the frequency with which there's an issue because of this development. It's only it's a blip on on the, the hydrograph that we look at. So, I mean, the, 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 yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much impervious service in this area. How would you? It's yeah, it's almost all. It's fairly negligible, but it's. I mean, we're here because the your, our regs say that you can't increase the runoff. It's our and our regs, as, as Aaron said, they sort of do, they, they they were designed. Uh, to, to address new construction on a raw piece of land, it's, it's unfortunately we don't have that here. But and the other problem with this, this site, as everybody knows, is it's on a hill. You know, it's, there's nothing we can do back here to, to help the situation because that we, we might have been, or they might have been able to deal with that, but it doesn't help. I totally think it's the best and highest highest and best use of this property. Want, I, I, I'm glad Aaron's here, I'm you know, I, but if you wanted in my opinion, I, do I think it's worth, and I don't have a site plan, uh, do I think it's worth um, losing, you know, four or five spaces and, and, and a travel way? No, I think it's ridiculous. I, you know, it would, it would, I think it would really impact the viability of this project. Um, it doesn't alleviate the, you know, the, the drainage issue. I, I, I think one outweighs the other. Uh, could I ask a question about the what you mean by a tree filter in the southwest southeast corner? 
So that's, it's a system where you are infiltrating stormwater through um, a basin, which has vegetation in it, often a tree. And um, it's a combination of layers of soil where, as the water flows through, it's filtered out and then ultimately you know, infiltrates into, uh, into the groundwater. Uh, as John pointed out, uh, the site, the, the soils have to be conducive to that. You have to have a free draining material. If you have silty or clayey materials, they may not be a good solution because you just can't infiltrate it. Um, and the other problem on this site is that, it, for those of you, Mike has the full size site plan, uh, but that, that, that right here, this corner of the site is, it, it's steep as heck. This is, a, this is an embankment right now. Yeah, that's, that, that's the real problem. This, yeah. is, this is what Aaron's talking about. Is this corner? This is where, where you're going to put some vegetation, right? So that's what you talking about that area right, right there. That's a steep embankment. So if you put a tree filter box there, you'd be looking at a con the wall of a concrete box. So it would be nice if it was flat around. That would be almost impossible, I think, to do in that location. Could it's you comment deep, upon that, Aaron? Very Forrest? steep right there. That, um, um, yeah. So, what for self? Self is it? Yeah, this area right here, right on yeah. Main Street. It's this little garden. Uh, that, that's a good point. And again, yeah. it was. Uh, that would be difficult. Having a having a perched situation, it, it would be tough to infiltrate because you're going to have whatever wall or system you put in there to, to berm up to create that tree wall. You'd like to just have it out of the side and then on the side wall. So maybe that's not a good, good location or a good suggestion. But it was trying to give the board an idea of the of the things that you might look at if you were looking to capture all of this runoff and, and infiltrate it. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing I want to point out is that you know I don't know what the cost of these these things are. So uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to put the applicant into the corner having to look at these things if they're completely unviable. But I, I felt like it was our due diligence to offer the board some solutions that you might want to at least talk about. Are these other alternatives that you laid out for us? Are they? I sort of have the impression that it's probably correct, incorrect. They go from least expensive to most expensive, or is that incorrect? I don't believe there's any, any order of <clears throat> cost. Okay. I would say that a bioretention system would, would be more involved and more um, expensive than a tree filter. A bioretention would be the second option. And then uh, the third option is permeable pavers, which in theory are a spectacular idea. But in practice, they're, they're rarely maintained. Um, they are great for the first few years, and then they're not vacuumed, and they fill up with uh, sand and other things from winter maintenance activities, and then they just function as a regular paper, and they, they just create runoff. So, right. Okay. I don't have any further questions. As for Anne, is anybody else have any questions? Should we uh, let it be excused from the hearing? Or? I appreciate your input. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much. So again, I think the letter stands on its own, but I want to come this evening and answer questions. Feel free to reach out. Uh, my contact info is on my card. The board has further questions. Thank you very much for your time, and then you can come in and back to Rollinsburg and get on the planning board again. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks a lot, there. Thanks. Yep. <clears throat> Would be appropriate to next hear from the applicant, since there's only for the public here. Please, okay. please come on sure. up. Uh, Jeff Hapsey, the applicant. Um, yeah, as we talked about down here, really tight. Um, he actually, there were actually those are good ideas. He had not done some of those ideas, but on a larger site. Uh, you know, one of them was the um, island. You do an island, a bioretention island. But obviously, if you look, like, where would my, my, it would just wipe out my parking, right? It's a basin, basically, that you put in the lot, and it becomes a landscaped island. And then the, the tree walls are actually the same concept. It's a basin, but a tree goes, you see them on city sidewalks, mm -hmm. and a tree goes on, <coughs> in it, but then it also um, is a concrete basin, so it's, you know, four feet high. So I, as you can see here, you try to stick those things there. Um, first of all, you want the outflow to go evenly on a tree basin. You can't have the outflow water falling off one side of it, and you got to onto a sidewalk would, would be insane. So it would require a huge retaining wall, swales each side. You're talking a major project in and of itself. And then also, I'm trying to bring the site down to make the building more open to the street. 
I'm not trying to wall off the building, and we're going to start like building more walls, raising elevations, which is really what I'm trying to move away from that, so that the, the site becomes more open, you know, to the pedestrian areas. So with this just landscape with the, the street trees, I think it's just going to be a little softer, and you know, this area is still going to retain some water. It's going to slow down the water. It's going to filtrate it. You know what I mean? Because the water. Uh, this is another thing we did add. Uh, as per Jay's request, as we added this um, curving, so the water would hit that, then it would slow down, it would also hit this landscape buckra area, then it would move across the parking lot and then eventually end up coming out on a big event, then it would come out the entrance, which, you know, that's where it's going to come out. So then they also did add that curving, you know, to keep it contained. Um, this is one thing that I didn't agree with, but I think Tobin, the engineer, was just like going down the bullet list, trying to do everything Jay wanted. And he did, he did a good job. Like I think he, he, he completed almost all the boxes, but, but then Jay had mentioned a sidewalk to the building. Well, that would not be a, this, this would be a unwalkable with that grade. So this is actually would become a staircase. Um, what, Jay, what Jay's concerned, Jeff wasn't at the meeting. It's kind of weird, Jay. Well, it's, it's, it is kind of weird, <clears throat> but what, Jay, what Jay's thought was, and, and I agree with it in theory, was that you know if this if this gets busy in downtown and gets more uh, you know uh, activity, people are going to want to walk up here, and he didn't really want people just turning in and walking in the in the travel way. He wanted a dedicated place to walk. The problem is, I mean, it sounds good in theory. But now you're just in the parking lot. Right. So what? I I don't know. I guess I don't know what the difference is between walking in here and walking in there. You know. And, and, and plus it's, it's and it's just well, now, land currently it would be now you're going to bring water right? into the sidewalk. Right. right. So you're going to have more. Yeah. More it, it would actually. Yeah. yeah as the so water moves it, it around. Was, the it, was a, it was a it was a it was a it was a good idea on Jay's yeah. part, but it was I just it, it doesn't. I like the concept too, because as I'm saying, I'm trying to open it to pedestrian. Right. I'm trying to make it a major problem. Yeah. Well, right. you know, one you thing that we could... a little bit of green space, and then you're right, it's a sluice. Yeah. And, water. Well, I I like because I just did that on my other site. I actually paved the whole site, and I and then I cut the pavement and put a brick walk on the pavement right up to the building, so people can feel like they're not walking through a parking lot, right? And that, I can, that's what planners want. But in this case. Because of this hill and the integration with the sidewalk, what I kind of was concerned was let's keep the water off the sidewalk. I even wanted to tweak out this curb. Like, I don't like this radii, but Jay wanted his engineering boilerplate radii for trucks or whatever. But I would just make this ease this out, bring it to the edge of the sidewalk. Then when you have your tip down in your sidewalk, the water's going to travel. Well, part of Jay's issue out the is front down the road where it should. In, in defense of Jay, is that he, he was concerned with how is the truck going to back up into here, into this loading dock. Totally, yeah. And you know, we our thought, our thinking was that they were going to, they were probably going to pull up the hill, back in this way, and then swing out this way. And he wanted to make sure they weren't rolling over the curb every single time. So, right. It, it, to me, it made sense. I, I don't, I don't think that I, that that made, I wish they would, would. I wish your engineer would have. Mirror the maybe it is the same radius on both sides. I can't really tell, but yeah, I, I think it makes sense because you know on the few occasions you have a big box truck backing in there, this is critical, and then heading out that's critical. So I I don't think that's a bad design. No, no, and I and I understand the the concept behind it, but what I would do then, and if that's the case, I'll just remove more curving because I want this tip down behind the edge. Oh, of the sure, curve. absolutely. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah so, right. and that's fine if you want to keep the rate up. The other thing I was thinking we could do, um, if, if you really want to address it, is, is if you widen the entrance out a little, you have a little more walking space. That's another option. I mean, it's a possibility. You're losing green space, man. You're not, you're not yeah, helping. I mean, it's, you know, I, <laughs> whatever the board wants to, to solve that, I, I really, I mean, this can stay on the site plan, but I don't want somebody to come out to inspect everything and say, hey, where's your sidewalk? It was on your site plan. You know, first of all, I would never pay the sidewalk like that. It's just it's atrocious. Second of all, that, that would end up having to be a staircase. And so I would have to do granite steps, which I do, just to make it look nicer, and pavers. But then it needs to get shoveled, and then i got to make If somebody slips and falls, and now I have a liability 
This is always going to get plowed, always salted. It will always be maintained. So this is actually like a better passageway. You know what I mean? As far as opening it to the, to the sidewalk. Um, but, you know, either way, I'm not going to like dwell on that. I just didn't notice that. And, um, you know, there, there's also an alternative design. You could run the sidewalk along the curbing, but then again, how do you tie it into your sidewalk? It's just kind of weird, you know. So that's uh, one issue that, you know, I'd rather not have it on there, but if it has to stay on there, I, I would just redesign it so it's a little nicer design than the way it's, it got drawn. That's, I guess that's my only contention. I, I wouldn't do that on, on one of my sites. Um, I think everything else is in, the, in uh, Tobin's letter, all the stuff he added that Jay wanted. I think, uh, I think he did a good job adding all the, you know, the required or the, the proposed stuff. He also took out, as uh, John had talked about, added a little more green space there, which I like that idea. So he took that out. We, we're still going to propose to pave the town road, extend the pavement on the town road just to make it cleaner. Um, I actually had him, I don't know why we didn't catch this, I think he was trying to line up parking lines, but I just had to move this down so that, that now is 23 and a half feet, so I'm asking for a waiver for six inches of parking now. Uh, on, the, on aisle width, it's actually six inches, but we still need a waiver for six inches. Um, but that's in the waiver letter. Um, I did notice here he didn't change it on the site plan, so I have to have him change that to 23 and a half feet. Um, but I'll get him to change that. Because um, he did write the waiver request on the site plan, because you guys asked. He changed it on the site plan, he just forgot to change it on the, in the text. But he did put it in his waiver letter, the 23 and a half. I noticed he got that right. Um, so yeah, that's in the waiver letter. The waivers haven't changed. It's still aisle width, parking width, and um, shared use. The shared use is, is referred to in a waiver letter, but it's not referred to here because I think Tobin and, um, and John actually had a discussion about it. I think Tobin was saying he had to reference ordinance to request a waiver, and there's no shared ordinance. So the way he drew it, unlike my letter where I went into that long convoluted explanation of my shared use calculation, he just flat out said, okay, you're going to meet all your commercial parking, but, um, but your residential you don't meet. So in the waiver letter and then on here you can see it's it's um, well, the table's right below. The, oh, on the table, you can read it exactly. Yeah. So, 19 units, two and a half per unit, and we're only dividing 21, which is one. In the waiver letter, it's like one point, yeah, one point something per unit. But that's not the way I proposed it originally, because if you if you take the shared use, I was dropping the two and a half to two, if you remember. And then, because of the shared use calculation, your commercial needs go down. Uh, you know, when your residential's there and commercial's not, that's where you get the shared. So pick your poison. I mean, any way you want to figure that out. 27 spaces, however you put it. Yeah. It's on the table. Yep. But, uh, yep. So it's in there. Um, and uh, let's see, what else do we have on the site plan? I think there was any major changes. Uh, we added your striping that you requested. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. I did also put in the packet um, that um, a letter from my bank, because you know my financing is hinging on this project. I don't know if you read that, but basically they're waiting until I get my approvals until they release the funds. So I think I, I think we started this in August. So I'm kind of like getting to the point now where I got to move forward. You know, I have contractors lined up. I don't want to lose them. Obviously, I don't want to lose my financing. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things, uh, timing. Uh, but it is a condition. I just wanted to bear, you know, you know that I was serious about that, but 
it's an actual condition of the loan. And we're ready, you know, we're ready at this point to, to move forward with the project as long as you guys are happy with the, the site plan and, and all these little things have been ironed out. Um, but again, on, on the um, drainage, as we talked about, that really is what we're adding. This sliver is my whole, the reason we've had all these meetings and all this back and forth and this discussion, this is why we can't make uh, the uh, regs, just because of the sliver. So as John said, the, you know, fall back and punt solution is you wipe out, you take that pavement out, and you make this parallel parking, and you lose four or five spots. And then I'd, I would just hate to do that because I think this, the front of the building to me is going to be the commercial side of the building. And that's where I want businesses to be able to thrive, <clears throat> townspeople to be able to park. You know, the public is invited really into the building from this, this side, whereas the back is more for the, the residential tenants. So to me, that parking is valuable to anybody, you know, who wants to use the building, because it is going to be a public building. Like, uh, you know, that's one of the things I didn't like about the last use was it was like a manufacturing use. So nobody ever got to go in the building or enjoy it or use it. It was just employees. Most of them didn't even live in Rollinsford. So my kind of mixed use plan is you live here, you also get to work here. The public gets to use the building. Um, so that was kind of my thinking in adding the parking, that it would make it such a better project. And you know, that was about as I mean, that was about as much as we could really get out of it. If you look at the the conditions because of the hillside. There is a very slight chance you could add a giant pond here to also make the regs, which was another thing that Tobin had mentioned. You're talking about totally re-engineering uh, re the drainage. Then you're talking about driving down Main Street, looking at a dam, a concrete outflow with a black pipe sticking out of it. You know those spillways they put in? Really unsightly not what I would think of when I think of Rollinsford and the history and the downtown, you know, it's a New England town. That's really not what I would want to look at if I was driving down Main Street. So we're trying to keep the integrity here and kind of the, you know, traditional look, uh, trying to make it part of the downtown and make it fit in. So I think at this point we've done everything we can do um, do you guys have any questions for me? Is there any board have any questions for the applicant? So I think it might be appropriate to entertain a motion to accept the plans as complete. Would that be correct? Do you, do you intend to reopen the public? Would you have two members of the public here or something? What's that? We do have two members of the public here. Okay. Please reopen. Then I apologize. We'll reopen the. I was uh, have to talk, but if they want we'll to. We'll have to reopen the. No, thank you. Right. No, thank so you. having hearing that the two members of the public do not wish to be heard, it would be appropriate to entertain a motion to accept the plans as complete. Did we already do? I don't remember. I thought no. Mrs. No. Sarah, Sarah said no. Did. Sarah said no. no. So yes, it's appropriate. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And then we'll discuss. Yep. So, okay. <clears throat> uh, then I'll move that we uh, accept the application for 710 Main Street as complete. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Second. Anyone opposed? Or all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. The ayes have it. Uh, so I believe um, the next step might be, do we do the waivers next, or do we accept, do we agree to approve the plan next? So, we so this is typically what you do is you, we, you know, we, I think uh, Jeff had asked us to uh, act on the waivers last week, or yeah. last month. Uh, we were uncomfortable not knowing what was going on. So the two waivers that I'm aware of are drainage and parking. I think that's it. I'll wait. What about this letter dated, uh, John, dated um, January 25th? There's two January 25th letters, one which appears to be a, a waiver letter, which I think he made there a Part of it is waiver and part of it is just explaining the, uh, the updates to the plan, I think. So yeah, there's a waiver letter. Yeah, and then a plan. There's one, I don't what I'm looking at is one that says numbers down. one through four on it as opposed to one through 
What is it? Three page letter? What's a two page letter? I have it. Is this the, the letter we're talking about? The waiver letter we're talking about? So, yeah, there's four waivers. The first one, you, uh, do you have it? No, I don't. I don't. That's what I passed out to you. Yeah, you can't make it. Yeah, we're sharing. One is waivers. I think that's a waiver like right. this one here, sir. Here, that's it. Yeah. It's two yeah. January 25th letters. That's it in your hand. That's the waiver letter. You got it right in your left hand. So maybe we have it. Up. See, I have this other letter just for the board's sake, dated January twenty first, fifth. That is oh, three that, pages long. Yeah, that's 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 basically what he's saying the heat, the the, re, the revisions made to the site plan with that letter and that yep. other letter, oh. just the four bullet points. Yeah. So this is just the oh, comments of Jay Stevens' letter. Yeah. Do you have this for your file, Sarah? Yeah, she has. No, I don't. Yes, you do. It was in the packet. It was the top that thing on the packet. It was the top thing on the packet. Oh. Well, I, I was, I'm assuming you have it. No, I don't. Well, I don't. Here. I have three copies there of the go. same one. Thank you. Yep. So, yes. you know, would it be appropriate to go through uh, each of the waivers on this yep. January 25th letter? And then I think we're also dealing with the sidewalk letter, correct? Well, uh, the sidewalk, the oral. Consideration I, regarding the sidewalk. Uh, yeah, I, I think let's, let's, This is what I like. Uh, this is what I recommend we do is, is deal with the, there's four waiver requests. Okay. Deal with those. Then we'll deal. Then there's some other site plan things that I wanted to bring up to you. Minor things that, that I think we should wrap up uh, tonight. So the, the first what waiver is the uh, obviously the parking uh, the parking calcs. We all know that if you look at the parking table, uh, 82 spaces are required. 62. I'm sorry. 89 are required. 62 are provided. Um, you know, I don't know what to tell you other than um, all the resident the the, the, the <clears throat> residential calculations that we use are two and a half spaces per unit. These are one bedroom units. Um, I can't guarantee you that people are going to have. I, I would I would venture a guess that the average unit will probably have one and a half cars. You know, if it's a one if it's a one person living. In, I would assume they have one car, maybe one person will have, you know, there'll be two people living with two cars, but it doesn't really matter, you know, what I say, what Jeff says, or what the justification is, there's really no other solution. So, if the building is going to be used, and I don't think the proposed use is all that intensive compared to what it's been used for in the past, you've got to either, or, you know, I think you've sort of got to agree that there's just not enough parking. And if, if it impacts anybody, it's going to impact them. Right. Not gonna that. But I think he's done every, he's made every effort to maximize the available. I would agree. Yeah. And this old mill cut right between the railroad line and Main Street. Yeah. So I, I, I think agree that I would not have a problem with the park. So I, let's just go through. I, I think it might be easier to look at these universally because <coughs> they really are all tied together. So the second one is the um, the size of the parking spaces. We require 10 by 20, but a common engineering practice now is 9 by 20. Most, a lot of times the cities now allow that. So I think that's fine. Um, and then the other one, as you see, as Jeff pointed out, the back here, he's shy, shy of uh, <clears throat> that aisle width by six inches. It, it, I, you know, I don't, I've got no problem with it. Jay Stevens had no, Stevens had no problem with that. And then the, the last one is obviously the, the uh, storm water. He does not meet your regulations because he's sending uh, a little bit of water off the front. And as I said before, I, I. If this was a, a blank slate we are starting with, I would have a problem with it. It's not a blank slate. I don't know what, I don't think there's a solution. I think Aaron LaChance did, did the best he could to say that, that he doesn't have an issue with it. So I think globally, these are, these are reasonable waiver requests, um, and I would recommend granting them all. And John, let me ask you this. If, um, let's say, because I, I, I think you agree that, that what you said, that, that it's going to impact the applicant in the sense that, if the parking is not enough, he's not going to get people going to leave and not renew their leases. Um, he would have the opportunity to come back in front of us and say, in the future, let's say the 19 units don't work because of parking, and to say, I want to modify the site plan and change the use of the those floors. Am I correct or not correct on that? You, you're well. Am I opening a can of worms? No, 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 well, no. I'm just uh, thinking I'm out loud. Think, uh, I think Kevin and maybe Mike were on the board when we suffered through the Cutter Mill uh, site plan. It, it's a gray area. I mean, the, the, the building inspectors and, and probably the select board will be the ones that sort of make a decision as to what 
rises to the level of a change of use. The sort of the, the general rule of thumb is that if a, if a use is more intensive, and generally measured by parking, a, 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 an amended site plan would be, would be in order. In this case, uh, what are you going to do that's more intensive? I mean, I, 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 so we're approving residential and commercial on the first, in, uh, first floor. Um, I, I suppose if, if Jeff wanted to change the, the, the upper floors to something more intensive, more commercial, yes, they'd be back here. If, they, if, if, if he finds it doesn't work and he wants to eliminate residential and go to warehousing, I don't know if he'd ever come back here. We'd just probably make the chain, the town would probably just say, yeah, it's fine, it's less intensive. Okay. My dream um, would be that one of these days, Mick decides to sell <laughs> this vacant lot to, 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 to the owner of the Blue and Mill, and, and, and that, that could be used in concert with us. But, you know, A water park. <laughs> it's uh, it was, but but you know that's the only opportunity for <clears throat> expansion, and it's a, it's it basically as you know it's a vacant lot. So um, if the board, if if, the, if John, if you think that the board is going to vote in favor of all four of these waivers, I would take them as a whole. If if there's someone that says, "Geez, I really don't feel comfortable with the third one," but I feel comfortable with it, then you could do them individually. But I don't. <coughs> Would someone like to make a motion to uh, approve the four waivers I'll make uh, as, 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 as at one complete vote as opposed to separately? Kevin says no. All right. So uh, the motion passes. For those in favor of um, all the waivers on the four waivers, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Uh, the motion passes, so the waivers have been granted. And then I believe the next step, and correct, well, so John, did you want to add something else um, at this point? Uh, there's just some minor wise? things that I, I, I would like, you, you brought up the sidewalk. I, I think, I know Jeff said we could leave it on there. I don't like doing that because I don't want someone in two years saying, you know, we're all we're dead and gone. What happened to that? I'd rather say, and I know I don't want to have Jeff spend money unnecessarily, but there are some minor changes in here. I just wanted to go through them real quickly, and, and I'm, I'm probably being a little bit nitpicky. Note, note six, I really think should be amended just so it's correct. We, you've now granted that waiver. 24 uh, is required, and he's provided 23 and a half. So I think that should be amended. It's a really a key stroke. Um, he's got some spelling errors that I'm sort of nitpicky about. He's, he's got parking areas to be stripped. They're actually being striped. I'd like those corrected. Um, the sidewalk, I really think, and maybe we should talk about it, as a, you should talk about it as a board, but I think that sidewalk should be removed because I, I do think it's, it doesn't make sense. And then my final <clears throat> comment was, I think Tobin got this wrong. Um, if you look over the retaining wall uh, to the left of the front parking lot below the three uh, propane tanks, he's got a note that says, handrail required. It's not a handrail, it's actually a barrier. And, and it's because the retaining wall is so high, it's a guard. It's a guardrail. It's not a handrail. So right. all I'm asking is to change that note to barrier or guardrail. It's right because you're not going to put it. Well, hand actually, there. can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, you know, I was looking at the site plan, and then you know, when you add in the handrail and then the, the scope of the wall, I was thinking what would really look nicer um, is if I do like a really nice granite wall like a hand stack granite wall around this tree but then just do like a nice gradual grass slope there like oh, i was thinking about later and it's like this is your site plan i could care less i wouldn't build a wall there but because i think it's honestly I, just, you're gonna, it, it, I think it's nine feet high or eight man, feet high I and you're, I don't, you're gonna need a big loader to get snow up and over i think it's yeah and I, I just think it's gonna be ugly hey this is your site plan so yeah i'm i all i'm like saying is out. it is not a handrail it's a gra if you can grade it and, and I, I, I think it's stupid. Look nicer. I think, I think it would look nicer. Yeah, it'd be softer, and then I could do a nice granite feature around and the I, tree. And if, if it were me, and again, yeah. this is, I, I only respond to your your to plans. If it were me, I would terrace it. I would put a, you know three a four foot wall, then a step back five feet, and then another four foot wall. But you know, if okay. you if you can grade it and gear it up, all I'm saying is it's not a handrail at the top; it's a guardrail or a barrier. Okay. So if that goes away through grading. I don't think this board cares. It actually would eliminate a little bit of an impervious surface. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, more grass is better. But yeah, um, yeah they could it, as long as you can stabilize it. it. Yeah, as long as it was allowable slope. Yeah. 
for well, us. It's going to be level. It's going to be. It's going to be a you know two. Yeah, allowable slope. slope. Like I sure. know there's. Well, a, we don't have no. Whatever I mean, it is, two to yeah. one, it's fine. It, two to one, yeah. As um, long as it's mobile, right? That's like, well, as long as it's stable, it doesn't slough up. You know, slump yeah. off. Yeah, we would like it to be. Yeah, it's going to be mowed, So yeah, but so so would I put a note on the site plan? May or may not like. You know, as far as the wall. Well, if you, if, if now you're saying you may not put that wall, you could you could say Option. retaining wall, uh, retaining wall or uh, or or grass slope or graded yeah. slope. Okay. You know, I don't care. Okay. Again, this is I'd rather side. just have that note in there. In so if that's then then if that if that's the case, then I then that, that needs to so make that change. That, I don't think anybody on this board cares. And then the last thing that I, that I sort of beat on last at the last meeting, John, was uh, lighting. There was a little bit of light spilling over um, into the entrance. I talked about that with Jay, John, uh, Jay, Tobin, uh, Jay and Tobin. The only real light, light spilling is, is right over here, and it's on, it's into the entrance on Main Street. But if you look at the edge of pavement, Across Main Street, there's no light trespass. Actually, that's not sure. It was point one, but there's a street light there that's causing that. Yeah. So they've done everything they can. Every all the other property lines are almost zero. So I, I've got no problem with it. So I. Yeah. Lighting was a concern of uh, their public comment. Now yeah. spillage over here. We're merged with the existing railroad avenue there. Yeah. Um, then we want to expand um, projections of, of right. the candlelight. And if you look at it, it's out. almost zero at the lot, right on the other side of the line. I mean, they, they go down to they go down to zero point two in the middle of the road, <clears throat> and you don't see it. But I suspect that if you went a little bit further, it'd be zero. So you've you've now seen all the areas that we yeah. didn't see last time right. that that yeah. chart was. Yeah, yeah. They added this. They added some over here, and then they added this. But that was a, that was just the public. Yeah. The public had right. questions about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And so now you've seen everything. Yep. You have. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm happy. No, I'm happy. Yep. And remember, I don't know this site like you guys do. So when I say something, it's more difficult. Yeah. 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 So John, do we need to take a vote on the changes you've recommended? I guess uh, what how, I, how so here's what I would do. I, I would, um, I guess I would make a motion. Uh, well, this is what I would. I, I think you can. You're ready to approve this, with the conditions that the the plan changes that I just discussed be made. Um, I don't think we require surety, do we, for a site plan? I don't think so. I don't think the board's ever done it. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I don't think the board of selectmen has ever had required any kind of. Uh, I don't recall it myself. Subdivision, yes, but for the for a subdivision, like this, for a subdivision, I think this is an existing building. Yeah, I don't. So I, I, I guess I would make. I would move to to approve the the. Uh, Site plan subject or with, with the following with the, the only condition that um, well here are the conditions uh, payment of all fees I'm not sure if oil tanner was paid or not but they have to be paid um, I don't know about uh, civil consultants if their their fee comes out of the application fee but I don't know they may have run over I don't really know so it would be civil consult consultants and oil tanner. That the plan change the the um, well I'll, I'll detail plan note six be amended to say 23 and a half feet instead of 20 feet the words stripped be changed to striped the sidewalk on the southeast corner of the driveway be removed and that the retaining wall note be amended to say guardrail or barrier not handrail uh, and also. If they want to change it to say this, the uh, the area may be graded in lieu of a uh, of, of a retaining wall. That's fine as well. And that's all. I have. <coughs> okay. Make sure I have it right here. So, one first condition is payment of all fees. Payment of oh, sorry. <laughs> payment of all fees. Number two is change number, number six, six to twenty three and a half feet. Yep. Um, where's where's stripped to strike? Yep. Um, 
Where is that? Um, where is that? Where is that? Right, right here. Right okay, so on. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So okay. Plans. On the site plan. C one. You probably can't see it. Um, Strip the stripe on yep. plan C1, <laughs> just we have it down here. Yep. And then remove sidewalk on southeast side. Uh, a Main Street Drive. Yeah, southeast side, Main Street Drive. And then um, remove handrail. Yeah, change reference. handrail to barrier slash guardrail. And if they want to amend it to say that the retained wall may, be, may not be uh, installed. And grade it in the site area, be graded instead. That's that's acceptable. Hey, John. Yeah. The date of the plan and this is an amended plan, and it's still dated from September. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess the fourth one is the issue date of the plan should be changed to something more current. What was changed? Where's his revision date? Yeah, but the issue date really. Well, I don't know. I don't know how he does it. And it's a, it's an issue date. Where's the See the revision block? Yeah, it's here. It's there. That's, I guess that's okay. So we'll scratch that one. And she yeah, you, you lied to us. You did not apply in August. This is September. No, I, I sent the guys out in August. But I you're was right. telling you, this is That was my first meeting. Oh, that's that's okay. Okay. I was gone in August. And whatever. Just after. Don't tell us that. All right. All right, so. So it's, should the issue date be amended? Or no, because he's got a revision block, revision history. He'll, he's going to add another line here. It'll say revision six uh, okay. per planner or whatever he's going to say. That's what I have. Uh, I'll make the motion to approve this project based on the uh, conditions we just reviewed, a total of four, four of them. Um, I would make that motion to approve the subject. I, I'm so sorry. I have six. Why don't I read it? You know, it's it's probably better for the record. I'll move that. We accept the uh, project as complete with the following conditions. Payment of all fees. John um, Change um, number, site plan, um, site plan reference note number six to 23 and a half feet. Change references from strip to stripe on plan C1. Remove sidewalk on reference on southeast side Main Street driveway. Remove handrail reference. Change to grade or retaining wall. And that's it, right? That's Am I missing one? Right, well, no, add the revision block. Kevin and I can't turn the camera current. Current. So. <laughs> No, that that one he, John said now. We're scratching. Oh, we're scratching. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The uh, uh, motion passes, and now I guess the final issue is you'll need to well, meet all those conditions, obviously, <laughs> but um, arrange with um, Miles, our, our, our chair, so you can sign the, the sign up right. These We don't record these, but you should, you're going to want to sign, I would get a, we're going to probably don't know how many the town wants. A couple of signed copies? Two. 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 Not a mylar, just a regular. Not a mylar, Not paper. A mylar paper, okay. Yep. And then you'll, I would assume you'd want to sign a copy for your file. So two full, three full size? I would say. In, in state one, maybe. Um, so the plan said. The town yeah. doesn't uh, record what the county would. He doesn't. I mean, I, if you want to record it, you can. I don't, they're never going to record the site plan. It's too busy, so. Yeah. Um, Wait, staple what? What are you talking about? All these sheets. Oh, the sheets. Oh, I have this. Sort of giving us oh, sheets. you want the full set? Well, it'd be nice. To, yes. Can you give us oh. two full sets oh, stapled okay. together on the edge, okay. so we could, otherwise we're going to lose the individual right. plans, the you know, sheets of the set. So two. So I don't want to fold it if I staple. No, roll them up. Roll them. Okay. We'll take them. Roll them. Staple them. Okay. You know. Uh, gotcha. Sequentially. So two full set staple and roll. Revise. No. Revise. Great. Right. Yes. <laughs> don't forget that part. And revise. Yeah, and I think there's. I didn't ask in the book. Is that a signature mark? Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, we'll be looking forward to seeing you at the select board meeting with the building department. Oh, that's right. I have to come back again, please. That's right. What was the vote? Yeah. Vote taken? Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I would say is that this we 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 spent um, years working on trying to get something like this going in the in the downtown and it's it's been it was not easy 
And I, I hope to God, first of all, I hope this is a success. Second of all, I hope that you invite the planning board in there to see this thing, because we never get to see the, sort of <laughs> oh, yeah. the fruits of our labor. Oh, yeah, no. I'm so it'd be big, nice to see. I'm going to have a big party. I'd, 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 well, we got, these people don't like parties, but it'd be nice. To yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. I heard, yeah, you guys don't go to parties. It would be nice to see. It just would be nice to see the, uh, you know. We don't get invited to parties. <laughs> We're all, yeah. So it'd be nice to see this thing okay. when it's all done. So, don't no, forget to do awesome. Heck, if you're up to it too, but I'd love to see it before your what the interior looks like before. That's all right. Now. Are you sure? No, I'm not. I don't. I'm not there. A micromanager or criticizer. I, I just <laughs> want to see. Yeah, but uh, a lot of us don't shocked. ever get to see you know to see these buildings. Yeah. So. It would be yeah. pretty neat for everybody to see maybe if a, you know. So it's a cool building. It was actually the cotton warehouse for the mill where they used to store the cotton. Huh. They built it because they didn't want to lose their supply. Because I guess they had one burned down with a big one, uh, and they lost their supply. So they built this so it wouldn't burn down. It's solid concrete. There's no existing machinery at all, right? Just the storage. Space. No, Bullen would have taken all that out. Yeah, I don't know if they they were doing a lot of processing. I'm not sure. I wish I could talk to somebody from the historical. Uh, you know, society or whatever. There must be somebody who does history in this town, wouldn't you think? Yeah, there's a couple of us sitting here. But, huh. I think, actually, I, I used to work with um, the son of the original Blue and owner. Still, he lives in Utah now, but I could get you in touch with him. He could tell you all about when his family took over the, the building and turned it into whatever they were building at the beginning. He might be a good resource oh, yeah. to tell you about. Actually, Joe across the street, he actually yep. knows a lot. <laughs> yes. He said he, he worked there during uh, the Marshall Plan, like loading trains for mm -hmm. World War II. Yeah. yeah. That's insane. That's in the backyard. Yeah. Crazy. All right, well, I think we're done with. Good luck, Jeff. Really, really, really. Right, thanks. Yeah, thank you for your guys. patience and reward. Yep. Then I think the next order of business, if I'm not getting correct, is this approval of uh, January's minutes. No, 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 no it's a the oh, yeah, two there. items. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have a public hearing, right? No. We already had the public hearing. We're just voting on the adoption of the stormwater okay, rights. So. We were waiting on me finding the magic letter from civil consultants. They did a technical review of the stormwater rights. I didn't have them that evening. I apologize. They made um, several recommendations. They were incorporated into the plans that you saw back in, I don't remember when we had the public hearing at this point, now a couple of months, three or four months ago. Um, our main question, I believe, was where are they going to go? Uh, where do they fit into the, into the um, site plan and subdivision regulation? So, Mr. Stevens had two suggestions. The first recommendation, which I think is probably the easiest, but I'm only one vote is have the site plan regulations, subdivision regulations, and addendum A refer to the draft stormwater regulations for analysis requirements rather than listing them separately in all of the documents. So don't go back and plug them in. Just have them, I would say, have them at the end be appendix or whatever. Um, if there's not an appendix on this one, I don't know if there is. There's an addendum A and an addendum Sure. Yeah, addendum C. Yeah. I'm calling it appendix. The next addendum. addendum. Yep. The next it should be addendum C. Yeah. And in subdivision, are there also yes, two? The same. So sure. it'll be C. addendum C. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the cleanest way to do it. But if not, he well, suggested. Well, the, the, the nice thing about doing it that way is that in five years, on the regulations change, it's pretty easy to wipe those out. Right. right. Change change addendum, that, yeah. Without modifying the whole document. So, change addendum. Yeah. I would. If people are okay with it, I would move that we adopt the stormwater regulations as presented at the public hearing and have them go in as addendum C in the site plan and um, subdivision order regulations. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, the one, uh, so, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Passes. Chair of the Board of Selectmen will be ecstatic. She's been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I believe she anticipated that for, for the last for, meeting. For quite some time in the group that John was on and uh, she was on. A whole group of folks at Point worked on these stormwater rights. This rapid regional planning going back uh, to the, uh, January of 2016. Yep. So it's been a couple of years. So thank you all.
Was there another item? Oh, yeah. We go to all of them. Oh, yeah. I want to be able to see it, too, when it's done. Yeah. I want to have everybody All right. The vote passes. All those in favor of accepting the minutes say aye. 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 And last, I think we need a motion to adjourn. We need to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning say aye.